The springboard for our inquiry was a little-known essay by John Maynard Keynes, the great economist, called Economic Possibilities for Our Grandchildren. And it came out in 1930, just when the Western world was sliding into the greatest depression of modern times. And Keynes, of course, made his name as the great anti-depression economist. And, and, and his name is associated with remedies for slumps. But in this essay, Economic Possibilities for Our Grandchildren, he strikes a different note. He said, look a little further ahead. We're suffering not just from the unemployment caused by economic breakdown, but from the unemployment caused by progress, what he called technological unemployment, arising from the displacement of labor by machines. We now call it automation. And this, he said, was a cause for optimism, not pessimism, because it meant we were solving the economic problem which had dominated human history. Technology was simultaneously lifting more and more people out of poverty and relieving them from the drudgery of toil. So that was the optimistic vista. And building on this thought, he um, ventured a remarkable prediction. In a 100 years' time, he said, Western societies would be producing four or five times as much wealth per head as they were then, and needing to work only 15 hours a week to produce it. That is three hours a day. The lives of Keynes's grandchildren, in other words, would be dominated not by the problem of having to earn their living, but of using the freedom which science and technology had won for them to live, and I quote, wisely, agreeably, and well. Well, what's happened to Keynes's prophecy? Um, he turned out to be only half right. We in the developed world have reached more or less the standard of living that he forecast in 1930. <clears throat> but our average hours of work <clears throat> are far from 15 a week. <clears throat> they have fallen a bit from about 50 hours, which was average then, to about 40 hours, which is standard today. And of course, we take longer holidays than we did then. So perhaps the fall is even greater than given by the hours, uh, recorded hours of work. <clears throat> and then there are other things. In some countries, hours of work have fallen more than in others. The Americans, it won't surprise you, work hardest of all, more hours than, than, than any, any other Western country. Um, and in a strange reversal of previous patterns, the rich now work harder than the poor. That always used to be, that was contrary to all previous um, um, expectation, people used to talk about the idle rich. That, is, that phrase is no longer in use. It's the workaholic rich that um, now uh, <coughs> dominate us. The general picture is clear. It is still work and not leisure that defines our civilization. 